So a tube has to have a hollow um, center. And in the em embryonic, uh, during embryonic gestation, um, that center is called a lumen. Um, and when it, in the adult, that tube structure is still retained, but the, the central uh, lumen is now called a ventricle. And so now we're going to look at the ventricles of the adult. We're going to see a little bit about how they, how they form uh, uh, during embryogenesis. So here is, here's what happens. The, the tube initially, when we have the three vesicles, the prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon, there's just a tube. When the telencephalon form, the diencephalon and telencephalon form, there's still one tube. But very quickly, what we saw was that the telencephalon invaginates to produce two hemispheres. At the time of that invagination, which is very, which is right around day 28, day 29 of gestation, the tube forms a Y. So one of these tubes is going to come off and go for the right hemisphere, and one's going to go for the left hemisphere. Now, this is the, so this is the, where we start, and this is where we're going to end up. We're going to jump forward and look at the, at the lumen at different um, levels of the nervous system, and then we'll go back a little bit and, and see how that was formed. So in the spinal cord, there is a lumen or a ventricle, which is called the central canal. And this would be, um, this would be a ventricle, except that in the human, it's clogged up. It's, got, it's clogged up with ependymal cells. It is not patent. There's nothing flowing. There's nothing open about this. Uh, there's nothing lumen about this, uh, this uh, central canal. When you get up into the uh, rom encephalon, you have what's called the fourth ventricle. And this is a large ventricle. Uh, and we'll look at that. And then when you get to the midbrain, you have a very narrow, skinny little uh, uh, passageway, which is called the cerebral aqueduct. Okay? And then when you get to the diencephalon, there's the third ventricle. And finally, these uh, these connections are connections that we're going we're gonna to see uh, what this is. This is the foramen of Monroe, one M-O-N-R-O, -O, no E. Um, and this gives rise to a lateral ventricle on either side. So let's just look at that a little bit more in detail. Central canal, the fourth ventricle serves the hindbrain. The cerebral aqueduct serves the midbrain. The third ventricle serves the thalamus and hypothalamus. And then there is a connection between the third ventricle and the lateral ventricles on either side that serve the, uh, um, that serve the cerebrum. And that connection is called the foramen of Monroe, or two of them is the foramen of Monroe. Now, when you look at this, when you look at the shape of the lateral ventricle, this is looking down on the brain. So this would be the front, this would be the back. Um, and what you see, you see a very interesting shape. It's, it's essentially, if we were looking at from the side, you would realize that it's, it's a ram's horn shape. It's the same shape as the telencephalon. Remember that the telencephalon expands backwards and then it comes around on the outside to form the temporal lobe. Well, the, the, the ventricle is going to have exactly the same shape, but be deep within. OK. So now let's look at where these various um, ventricles are. This is, this is again, a mid-sagittal section. Here's the cerebellum. Here's the pons. Here's the medulla. And this little triangle here is where the fourth ventricle is, OK? So that's the fourth ventricle. You can see that I actually cut this brain very well. I cut it very close to midline because I caught most of the aqueduct, which is only, it's, it's only a few millimeters um, wide. And so here's the midbrain. Here's the cerebral aqueduct. Now, you may imagine <clears throat> right there, you might see this piece right here. That's the. Oops, that is the uh, pineal gland. So let's say that there was a, uh, 
a tumor in the pineal gland. That's called a pinealoma. And, and it is one of the tumor producing cell types in the cranium. If that expands, one of the things that it does is it can crush, it can close this aqueduct. And so this is one of the places where you can get hydrocephalus. Again, we're gonna go into what hydrocephalus is and, and why it occurs, but this, suffice it to say at this point that the aqueduct is a, is a, uh, is a weakness. It's a narrow place and if it gets closed off, there's, there are gonna be problems. And a, and a pineal tumor uh, is one reason that we can, uh, that can occur. Here's the thalamus. The third ventricle is right here. You're, you're seeing the, the medial surface of the right thalamus. So there is a thin slit, which is the third ventricle, that just is right on the midline, but it's long. Okay, so that's the third ventricle, and then You'll see later, you'll see there's a foramen of Monroe right there, which leads to the lateral ventricle, which is deep within here. So we want to go back to the fourth ventricle. We're going to go over to the board for a second. <clears throat> the fourth ventricle is uh, formed by the second big comb over in the brain. Remember, the first big comb over is of the telencephalic hemispheres and it leaves us with the vellum interpositum. The second one is that the cerebellum forms from one place at the rostral end at, of the rhombencephalon. Where the rhombencephalon meets the mesencephalon, there are a bunch of progenitor cells. That's where it's packed with progenitor cells. So if you took a cross section right through here, you would see this. And you see that right here, this thing called the rhombic lip, that is what produces um, all the cells that are gonna inhabit the cerebellum. It's a lot of cells. Um, and the, uh, the nervous system has, has opened up so that uh, the cerebellum is gonna come in and fill this and the fourth ventricle is going to be all of this space between the pons, medulla, and the cerebellum on the dorsal side. So it's the fourth ventricle is, the, is this space. Okay. And we'll just look at that now um, in a cross section. So the cross section that you're about to see is, is right through here, right through here. And what you see, here's the pons. Here's the cerebellum, and here's the fourth ventricle, okay? And the next one is a section through the, uh, through the telencephalon. What you see now are the lateral ventricles, okay? Here's one hemisphere, here's the other hemisphere, here's the lateral ventricle. It's coming around, and in fact, there's another little piece of the ventricle um, uh, down here in the temporal lobe. Okay. So in the next, uh, in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's taking place inside the ventricles. What's taking place is that we're getting CSF and the CSF is being made by Cori plexus. Understanding how Cori plexus is made is going to help you navigate the lumen, the ventricles of the nervous system. <music>